Hello and welcome to Cannonman TV. My name is Connor McLeod. In this highly informative interview, I speak with Sam Cannon. In this interview, we discuss Sam's music and entertainment background and what brought him to work in cannabis, COP26, the UK cannabis industry and the best direction to take for the future, the global cannabis industry and how to contribute towards domestic markets, product earth and the benefits cannabis can have in creating a productive workforce. Make sure to like and subscribe, and support me on Patreon, where you can help to build a stronger cannabis media platform. Now then, let's talk cannabis. Thanks very much for joining me here, Sam. This is brilliant. No, Connor, thank you very much, mate. And uh, I was just complimenting your artwork in the background and, and finding out that you, that you do it all yourself. And we definitely need to turn Cannaman TV into a children's TV series. Without and doubt. educate children. Educate children on how good this plant is. I hope everybody's listening to this. Is anybody, I'm going to have to quote that and put that on the screen there, yeah? <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I really appreciate that. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll make an end of episode cartoon. That's what I'll do. I'll throw that up at the end of the episode. Um, but yeah, I mean, Perfect. let's say most people, if not everybody, will be aware of who you are in the cannabis industry. But for those that aren't, could you give a wee background on yourself and what it is that you do in the cannabis industry? Sure. Um, so, I mean, I, I predominantly come from an entertainment background. I've worked for the last seven years for a motorsport championship called Formula E. I'll probably tell me off for saying that about educating children on cannabis, but it's, it's something that we need to do and they need to be made aware. So Formula E, if you're listening, that's what I believe in. Uh, and then for 10 years before that, um, I was working as head of events for Ministry of Sound. So we were putting on parties all over all over the world. Uh, but going back to Formula E, I, I basically put together their whole music uh, strategy, um, wrote the music with with a numerous um, uh, composers and in very talented producers uh, for the TV series, um, and also created a, a DJ persona called EJ, uh, who has been the resident DJ for Formula E for the last seven years, traveling around the world with the championship and, uh, and DJing at different events. Uh, and in Saudi Arabia, we were the first ever event where men and women could dance next to each other. Uh, first ever music event where, where men and women could dance next to each other so that was a real amazing moment for for the for 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 the championship <laughs> i would say for the championship i should put the country first of all <laughs> uh but, but you know for the for the country is it and 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 someone said to me a lady that works with, with with women's rights in pakistan literally at the beginning of this year she said wow she said i read about that concert she said you know what you did the, what those people felt for the first time was was freedom and if you do actually think like that i mean that would be incredible it would be like the rave scene was here in the late 80s right minus you know other uh, other exciting things that made the rave scene in the 80s. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, but um you know it it, it it must be like that experiencing that sort of togetherness listening to artists that you love for the first time hearing music that you love for the first time and i think that that was amazing and 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 that sort of event makes me realise why I work in cannabis is because it's it, it's impactful, and and I think I like to work in impacts, and I see cannabis as having massive massive impact on on this planet, only in the positive ways. Because if you everybody will know that is listening to your show, if you look back through you know through the history of cannabis and why we are actually where we are today, is through lies through the media um and you know and, and and lobbying and it's very it's very uh it's very apparent now if you look at what's happening with the whole lobbying conversations with with uh with with, with david cameron this happened uh with the big pharmaceutical companies uh, uh petrochemical companies timber companies in the i think is in the 40s 30s 40s 60s <laughs> whenever this happened uh but that whole period while they were trying to make drugs or the war but create the war on drugs um that that all stems from lies and and i think that's very apparent if you actually look at what's happening in the media now and the government now it's there's a lot of lot of lying going on um so about six years ago same sort of time i i was first started working with formula e um i I'm, i mean i'm 41 years old now um i've smoked my first joint when i was when i was a teenager um a, a young teenager and i wouldn't recommend young teenagers smoking any high THC because we're finding it very relevant or very uh, truthful that, that a high THC could actually affect, you know, the, the, yeah. the developing brain. Yeah. So there's all, this is all the things that we need to, that we need to remember. So again, education, right? You know, can a man educate, you know, kids that, you know, is, should there be studies going on where, you know, do, does, uh, is, 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 a, is CBD good for children? Should they be having it as a, as, as a vitamin from a very early age? Mother, mother's milk, right? has endocannabinoids in it. 
Um, you know, my little boy is eight, eight months old and, you know, he's probably more stone than I am half the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's 100% unconcentrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so, like, I mean, I've, I've known the industry for a long time. I've known, I mean, I worked, I came up through the rave scene in the 90s. Um, so drugs have always been around me for a, for a very long time. Psychedelics mainly, you know, I'm, I'm you know, yeah, not afraid, you know, through going through the rave scene. Yes, MDMA, um, LSD, magic mushrooms, um, you know, cocaine. I mean, you know, you know, you go through your stage. If, you, if it's if it's available there, and you go and you're a, and you're a you're a you're a child or a, a young adult growing up, um, you know, if, if if it's available and you're involved in a certain scene, you 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 have the op option should you choose to to get involved in that market yeah. which then actually then stems down to the conversation well if it's always going to exist then a regulator market makes absolute sense because people will know exactly what they're getting they can be advised on what the effects are you know they can find out if they're allergic to certain to, to certain things all, all of that side of stuff um so i got about six years ago i started getting really interested in that side sort of looking at the whole legal um uh, market cannabis market what was going on over in the states you know what was happening in california colorado canada uruguay um and yeah and and got thrown into this whirlwind um and was just like wow this this industry is amazing yeah. um it has got just incredible people that you know that, that are very open uh to to accepting different opinions uh, but you know, but managing to to all, all get along, and you know, and that's that's probably the the hippie in me that that, that 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 stems from that. Apparently, I was I was made in San Francisco in 1979, so I don't know whether some some hippie has 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 rubbed <laughs> off on me. Uh, but um, you know, I, I do think that 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 there is a, a a a wonderful world out there in the future where everybody can get along, um, and cannabis can play a major role in that um and you know and fund all of that and create businesses and create jobs and create medicine and create um sustainable construction materials and we can start to look at how we can decarbonize um the construction industry and the music industry and you know how we can move people from opioid medication to more natural medication which is all of the science that's coming through at the moment yeah. um it's it's it, it's incredible and 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 to see that happen over, and, and to to experience that over the last six years and see where we're where we're kind of getting to um and you know and 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 the you know the, the creation of the cannabis industry council here in the uk um and the network of the bigger network we're working with the uh, world cannabis foundation over in california and um, people that work with the United Nations and, you know, government officials in Africa. And that's really interesting is getting it, seeing the African countries start to discover what this, what this plant can actually do for their local communities, feed their local communities, how the, how's their local communities regenerate the soil that's absolutely depleted. Yeah. Um, look, right. It's only positive. Yes, there are some negatives, right? They are, we do know that, that, high thc cannabis can trigger psychotic episodes with people that suffer from psychosis and schizophrenia yeah. but we also know that high cbt high cbd which is an antipsychotic can then actually treat those people that have got psychosis and so yeah. you know is there is there is there a chance that someone could with psychosis who doesn't get discovered that they've got psychosis until their 30s in their early 20s smokes a joint has a psychotic psychotic episode isn't frightened to admit that they've had that and then they can actually get treated for it. And it's like instant, you know, you could actually use, you, I mean, I, I don't want to go down that route of saying that, but you know, you could actually use cannabis to actually find out those, those, those yeah. things. Um, to be honest, that's, that's uh, a good point there, Sam, actually, because the reality is we find out about the endocannabinoid system because of that basis that cannabis were consuming it recreationally, tried to figure out how it interacted with the body physiologically and figured out that we no longer, it's not just a one way, uh, street we actually have receptors we have these uh, endogenous produced cannabinoids and all these different other things as a direct result of consuming cannabis recreationally that was the, the the basis of it but you made quite a couple of good points there sam one of them was about prohibition um, and the fact is that obviously recreational substance use generally is a factor of human culture you know it's not a case where it's just people a fringe group and that kind of thing it's something that's been it's um, inherent to human society as a whole so prohibiting it or, or sections of it's regressive and it's just not worked and one of the best examples i like to use for that and i'm by no means theologically biased, but is the, the 
the apple in the Bible. You know, they were told, don't eat the apple. This is, and if you're even going, if it's a metaphorically, you know, it's a um, fabricated book, if you're, just, if you're not religious in any way, shape or form, the, the timeline for when the book was written was still thousands of years ago. So they're still describing a prohibition element which is unsuccessful thousands of years ago. Um, and another one of the points you made as well was about uh, cannabis for children. And uh, at the end of the month, uh, I'm going to be interviewing um, Elisa Lee, and she's got um, it's, uh, Cannabis for Children International. And they're doing tremendous work for trying to get more medicine into, into the, the hands of people yep. that really desperately need it. Um, yep. But two, two fantastic points there, Sam. Um, you put I, know, uh, I, I know Elisa, actually. I've been on a number of calls with her um we she got introduced to me to a guy called dimitri freeman i gotta give a big big up to dimitri because dimitri is a legend i haven't spoken to him for a few weeks uh and dimitri if you're watching this mate give me a call please <laughs> uh, but um he, he he introduced me to uh to 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 elisa and to also um the sioux nation the choctaw nation um and we'd actually been having calls with 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 the sioux nation sort of members of the sioux nation and the choctaw nation particularly the Rosebud tribe um, and uh, just really amazing people um, who, who also can see the benefits of, of, a, of a legal industry to help their, you know, their, their, the way that they've had to be living, living on, their, on their reservations. Um, so, you know, the, you, can, you can create insulation to stick into the sides of the building so that they're warm at the, at the, in, in the winter, for example. Um, so, um, and then also, you know, they, you know, with indigenous tribes, there is a known for, for, for addiction within within a lot of those tribes um, and cannabis can be used as a, as a tool to, to, to tackle that addiction. Yeah. So then that's that was, the, you know, having those conversations with, with those guys, was, that was amazing. I mean, that's when you're speaking before, I mean, that's for, for over the last six years having that sort of wider network of those different groups of people, people and realizing how big the cannabis community really is yeah i mean you've got people like steve d'angelo um uh, over in california who's, who's who's traveling the world at the moment um i've been having conversations with his manager gainel rogers she's a, she's a lovely lady um but steve's been traveling across the world you know he's now he's now moving uh i don't know whether i can say that i'll say east coast um <laughs> uh to you know he sees the benefits of being over there um and he's been going down to places like morocco and reporting back on the on the traditional ways of growing in those countries as well um and i think that's one thing that we should consider as a as an industry is you know when you when you've got these options to go to these countries and it's very exciting i mean we've got an option to go and grow in in, in morocco at the moment you know, don't go there and go, well, we can stick it all in greenhouses and we can, you know, da, da, da. it's a no, we need to, we need to respect the way how those countries have been growing for, 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 for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, that, that shouldn't be lost. Like the guys in the Emerald Triangle, the Emerald Triangle should stay as it is. It's incredible, you know? Um, and I think that's what, that's what will make the cannabis industry even more interesting is that we'll, there will be these regions that grow different strains outdoors under certain conditions. Um, and that's going to be interesting to see what happens with climate change as well, because everything's heating up. What will that do? Apparently, sunshine raises the THC levels, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she prepared for some good products. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, do, it does actually cause a problem for hemp, though, um, because, you know, in, in the UK, this is something that we're trying to fight at the moment, is that we've only got access to a certain amount of, of, of types of seeds. Um, and you know the, the you know the, the temperatures are heating up. The, if, if, if you're growing hemp and it goes over a certain, it, it goes hot, which is what's happening in America at the moment, where it goes above the 0.3 percent THC threshold, mm -hmm. um, you have to destroy your crop. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So you know all of that needs to be completely quashed. Um, you know all of that red tape nonsense. Um, that, that exists out there right now. Um, but it's interesting to see that hope, that, that red tape hopefully being removed. Especially because of the, you mentioned earlier, the Cannabis Industry Council, they, it wasn't created through the, the council, but the report that was done through uh, Maple Tree um, and Macro Solicitors was perfect in highlighting the main issues. And it really did seem to be a huge step forward because it was the very first time it would have this kind of nucleus of focus, you know, instead of uh, these abstract points that are relatively ambiguous and what we need to do to actually cause change. So the Cameron Standards Council was a huge step forward. It'd be interesting to see what that's looking like in even 18 months time, you know. Um, uh, headed by Professor Mike Barnes, 
um, open armed the the complete industry. Um, you know, it's it's focused on medicine, but you know, there's the hemp associations that have been included. Um, um uh, anything from marketing as you say through to solicitors yeah. um a real broad range of 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 industry leaders you know yeah. people who know this industry inside out that have been working in this industry for for, for decades yeah i mean i i see the cic as a as as, as the backbone as a complete backbone of the industry you know it, it's it needs to focus on what what regulation is allowing now yeah. Um, and you know, that is, that is medical cannabis, um, and, uh, and, and hemp, but then it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's really standing. We, uh, they wrote a, a paper that got uh, given to the government, which was, um, a medical cannabis paper and CBD. I can't remember what it was titled entitled. I should remember, but on the, on the first page, it was a 10 point recommendation to the government of what they can do now to allow this industry to thrive. Yeah. Um, so it makes it very easy. It makes mm. it very, very easy for the government. Um, so I, you know, uh, there's, we had our first, um, sort of group meeting, which was very nice in person meeting three weeks ago, uh, which was great to see three or four weeks ago. It was great to see people. They've had follow-ups. We've got subgroups that are tackling, you know, regulation that's tackling marketing and, and PR, uh, hemp group, medical cannabis group, um, uh, standards group. Um, and in each of those groups, it's got people that are interested in those areas. So all of a sudden, you've got groups of like 10 people all working together to actually create that industry. Um, so I think, I think the CIC will allow us to see the industry that we want as a, as a country. It was actually brilliant because I seen what the photo of everybody in the, in the meeting. Yeah, I don't know. I thought one of those the publications maybe cannabis. Health I, I, I I took the photo. <laughs> oh, you're joking! I, I took the photo and then I thought, fuck, I've taken the photo. I'm not in the fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Someone was like, someone was like, just take the selfie. Do it, do it like that. I was just like, no, look. The moment's passed. You can say that you're the guy behind the camera. As my dad always, you know, when we up, there's always pictures of me and my sister and my mum. And it's like, where's your dad? And he's like, you know, your dad was always the one behind the camera. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no. That's good though, man. That's good, Sam. Because let's be honest, there's like maybe 40 or 50 people in the photo. There's only one person that can take the photo. So that's all yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was great, you know. And, it, you know, it was, a, it was a three hour proper serious meeting, put full, full, full presentation on the areas that we want to focus on. Um, we had done the subgroups before. So the subgroups uh, had then fed into this presentation and then the chair of each of those subgroups then presented their own little group. Right. Um, and, and, you know, and it, and it, and it gets buying from everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything is done on a vote. Um, you know, if, 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 a, if, a, if a decision needs to be made, we've done it, you know, did it on the first call. We, I think we did it once to decide who was going to be chair of the, of the, of the medical cannabis group. Um, and it just works, you know, straight away. Well, here's, here's your options. 106 companies have your vote, whatever goes through. And, and you know, and then, and then everybody respects what that is because it was done democratically. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it's, 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 it's interesting. The speed, though, at stuff that gets done is, is just going to be down to, you know, our wonderful, glorious government and, right. and how quickly we can change their mind. But, you know, Boris Johnson definitely seems to change his mind quite quickly these days. Um, you know, he's off on holiday. Maybe we can find out where he is on holiday and just go, you know, get in his ear at dinner time or something like that. Pretty certain he's in Amsterdam at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wouldn't I mean, surprise me, mate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, but it's certainly a bonus. Um, there's actually two or three people that I think on his... Uh, staff that went to Canada and did a report, I think, for Vote Face, yes. I think. Um, yeah, so there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's uh, yeah. positivity there. But um, you mentioned earlier about hemp and obviously COP26 is coming up soon. So, I mean, what is the importance behind COP26? And for those that are actually unaware of it, could you give a wee uh, breakdown of what it is? COP26 is the United Nations Climate Change Summit, um, which is in Glasgow this uh, November, uh, between the 1st and the 12th of November. And basically, uh, uh, COP stands for Conference of Parties. Um, and it's all the members of, of the United Nations uh, coming together and the tackling of climate change. Um, and, and, and probably a bunch of other, uh, a bunch of other stuff that, that gets discussed while all of those people are together. But the main focus on COP this year is climate change. And you know, it, it, it's everywhere, whether you choose to believe climate change, whether you don't choose to believe climate change, it's, there's definitely a lot of it on, on TV at the moment. There's yeah. definitely a lot of people that are losing their homes. 
um, uh, and you know, and 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 people dying. Um, so um, it's 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 pretty important. In Paris, uh, everybody came to the Paris 2030 Agreement, uh, which was agreeing that they would reduce their emissions by 2030, and by 2050 they would be net zero. Um, um, now, a little bit about net zero. Net zero is a little bit, or, or carbon neutral, um, is, is, is useless, really, because it's like sitting in a car and the car being a neutral. You're not, you're not going anywhere. Um, so where we really want people to be is being climate positive. So that's basically, you know, getting rid of your carbon footprint completely and then working out as a business how you are going to Contribute. capture carbon from, from, from the atmosphere. Mm. And it's actually really interesting right because you you're coming up with new businesses because it's it's, it's something it's a new area that that, that that needs to be tackled um but the cannabis industry has a little bit of a secret weapon which yeah. is wicked um the actual plant itself but if we want to we will refer to it as hemp for the time being because hemp we seem to be able to talk about quite freely here in the uk and it doesn't seem to offend people as soon as you say the c word yeah. You know, every everybody goes, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> but you say hemp, it's like diet cannabis. <laughs> and uh and so you know that's quite hemp- a good reference. I like that diet <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> um and uh you know hemp hemp can sequester up to 30 tons of carbon per hectare, which is we think around 20 times more carbon than trees um and then you know can you can you can you get that up even more who knows but you know let's let's say at the moment you can sequester if you grow hemp normally around 10 tons of carbon per hectare if you grow hemp regeneratively uh you can sequester around 30 tons of hep, 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 30, 30 tons of uh hemp per hectare obviously you want to be sequestering as much or a farmer wants to be sequestering as much as possible yeah. because you can now create carbon credits and you can sell those carbon credits back to companies like Shell, BP, anyone who is a heavy polluter, um, and uh, and they can start to offset the carbon that they produce so that they can become carbon neutral. You know, ideally we want them to be climate positive, but if we could get Shell and BP down to carbon neutral from the amount that they pollute, yeah. that would be incredible. We're not we're not stopping these companies. You know, we, we, they they are still allowed to exist. They are major corporations that have existed for a long time. They are the problems, the reasons why we are in trouble right now. Yeah. So let's use these guys' money to actually fix what we the, 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 the problems that we've got now. Um, that would be my attitude. I haven't got any money off them yet. <laughs> and, and there'll probably be a bunch of people that will tell me, eh, don't work with them. Yeah. But you know, I think that these these major corporations have got the cash. They have got they have got liquid money. They can yeah. put money, they can throw millions of pounds. On, 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 onto projects and it not bother them they just need the right projects put in front of them um, and I think as the cannabis industry we have the right projects uh, and they, they should be they should be listening to us um, they probably so are just, so just, a, just a side note on that as well when people say that obviously they shouldn't be working with Shell and, and other companies like that corporations it's like the reality is they're so systematically ingrained in, in the society there is absolutely no way that you can get away with removing them so you have mm-hmm. to do something and the very minimum you can do is interact in a positive manner with them you know yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's my attitude. You know, I mean, I think other people have different different attitudes, but Connor, you know, it sounds like you're on, you're, you're on the same page there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, there's interesting conversations to have. Um, you know, there, are, there probably are, you know, reasons why you shouldn't work with them, but hey, hey, we, we are where we are and we need some money. So anyone, <laughs> give us some money and we can actually go and do good with it. Um, and uh, so COP26 is a fine example. Uh, so what we did is we brought all of the uh, hemp associations together across the whole of the UK, Scottish Hemp Association, Northern Ireland Hemp Association, the Carbon Farm, Social Enterprise International, Jersey Hemp, Holistic Highland Hemp, British Hemp Alliance, Vitality Hemp, Freeman Hemp, Unite Hemp, Hemp Cooperative Ireland and Oware over in California. Right. So we brought all of those companies together and we created a health and environment management project. And if you break that down to H-E-M-P, it spells hemp. Yeah. Um, and we pitched that to the, uh, the UK government um, to basically showcase hemp as a tool to combat climate change and the UK hemp industry and what we're doing to try and combat climate change. You know, we even spoke to uh, Michael Gove back in October last year, myself and Mandy Truss. 
um, and um, uh, from Big Chief Hemp, uh, <laughs> and, um, and and actually had a, a conversation. Uh, and what was really funny is that we we recorded the conversation uh, and then contacted them the week after and said, look, we recorded the conversation. We we're making a documentary. Can we use the conversation on the documentary? They went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael didn't know who was being recorded. Uh, but, you know, we, we told the government the benefit, the, the, the environmental benefits of hemp. We told the government the, 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 the medical benefits of hemp. This is, this is a man, by the way, that is, that is pitched to be going in and replacing Pretty Patel in the home office. So if this person takes this job, or even if he has the opportunity to have that conversation, conversation with Pretty Patel, Matt Hancock and Rishi Sunak, as he promised us on the call, um, you know, nothing's been done about it. You know, mm. if they, if they actually really, if they, if, if any, if anyone with, with, with a single brain cell between their head could actually look at the UK and realize the opportunity that we have with making cannabis legal here in the UK. And obviously we need to do it in sections. You know, you can't just legalize everything tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but you could de decriminalize everything tomorrow. Um, uh, you could make, you know, hemp legal or, or without the restrictions to grow for farmers to grow so that they can prep for next year so that we can actually grow a ton load of hemp, put the infrastructure in place here and start making healthy food products, sustainable building products, um, you know, down to medicinal products that can then go into a medicinal market and eventually a recreational market. We, 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 this is somebody that's been told all of that. So I would hope if, 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 you know, if he is a decent human being, like he said, he was on, on, on the call that he would actually, if he put, got put in that position, he would make those changes very, very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, so let, let, let's, let's see. But everybody got together um, on a number of, a number of zoom calls um, and, you know, came up with health and environment management project uh, presented it as in, in the whole format that the, 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 that it was requested. So we had proposals, they were, they were, they were sent on time. There was scientific evidence to back it up. Um, you know, we had exciting things. We wanted to create the first ever uh, tour in festival tent uh, that was climate positive, you know, that was made out of hemp that the, 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 you know, the, the, the fuel that was used to jet it around was powered by hemp, you know, hemp, hemp yeah. diesel or, or ethanol or, or hemp hydrogen whatever, where, wherever we get to. Um, and, you know, we've got a, a festival tent that we can tour around the world um, that, that can create, that, you know, that can take this message and we can link it with music. Um, and that's what we wanted to do with COP as well, um, was, was, was link everything with music. Uh, and we had this whole presentation uh, and sadly that, you know, the, we, we got knocked back and the excuse was there were 4,000 uh, applications uh, and we, we couldn't look after everybody. Uh, personally, I think they probably looked at it and saw, thought cannabis and just weren't interested. Uh, but we didn't give up. So I went up to Scotland. Uh, I met with uh, a friend of mine called Phil Byrne. Uh, he took me to meet some friends of his at a venue called St. Luke's, which is a, a chapel, a converted chapel or converted church in, in Glasgow's East End uh, that is now a, a 650 capacity music venue. Uh, and we met with the owner, Nori, of, uh, of BAD, which is the Barra's Art and Design District. Uh, we spoke with Tom, the, the, the manager of, of Barrowland, which is a very famous uh, live music venue where Springsteen's performed and Oasis has performed. And we pitched to them this concept of, of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a festival, um, a fringe festival um, that, uh, that runs alongside COP at the same time. Uh, we called it Beyond the Green because it's right next to Glasgow Green. Right. Um, and uh, and they really like it. You know, what we want to do is try and join up all of the activities that they've got going on. I mean, you know, Barrowlands has, has, has got, you know, Barrowlands is full. It's got bookings. They've got their books every night. I was, John Tom was like, sorry, I've got nothing available for you. I was like, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got to put any artists in there. Perfect. <laughs> uh nori was like you know so i've got a, i've got a commercial booking so i can't commit this venue however i can give you 226 gallow gate uh which is a very famous really nice pub next to Barrowlands. wonderful wonderful boozer like stroke bar uh where it's famous for kenny dalgleish doing a, a press conference with glasgow rangers there or something like that <laughs> so i thought well that would be really cool because maybe we could do some acoustic music in there or we could do some like you know panels and talks it just becomes a venue yeah. Um, and then St. Luke's have given us two dates, the 3rd of November and the 6th of November. Um, so on the 3rd of November, we're speaking with Boohoo, um, who, are, who are, have a very high third party carbon footprint 
and obviously have gone through everything that they've gone through in the news right now uh, with with the third party factories that they work with and 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 you know and the, and the wages that they're paying and you know they, they've got horrific horrific supply chain mm -hmm. sustainability at boohoo uh, who's a wonderful lady called rosie and, a, and another dude called james um who you know who really believe that you know that they can use the scale of that company to actually do good now really there's things that you can change immediately but understandably commercial companies can't change immediately but what you can do is that you can again work with them on something that could actually create bigger change within that company it goes back to the shell conversation bp yeah. conversation right unless you're actually working with these companies you're never going to make uh, you're never going to help help them change um and uh so we, we we're discussing with them at the moment doing a a hemp line that will go into one of their one of their brands whether that be you know debenhams or uh Karen Millen or something like that mm -hmm. um uh that's that that you know that can you can then actually gives them as a, as a as a company something to shout about and then maybe gives them a su supply chain that you can then start to scale up as hemp starts to get legalized that you can then actually start to create these uh hemp organic cotton blends that you can then lower the price and it starts to become competitive with the, the cotton market mm -hmm. and then the cotton market starts to realize oh hey it's not worth growing hemp cotton anymore why don't we just start growing hemp and then yeah. all of a sudden you've got the whole fashion industry moving over to hemp apparel which could have a massive impact on the yeah. on, on, on the planet um so you know what? What I'd like to do with them is a is a fashion show, a sustainable fashion show on the on the Wednesday night at St Luke's, um, and we're speaking with them about that at the moment. It's no way confirmed, but um, you know, let's let's see what happens. Um, and then Saturday night, which I'm really really excited about, we're speaking with Earth Aid, um, which is the original uh, producers of Live Aid, right. um, and uh, they've got huge huge plans for next year for stadium shows and, and and using the name earth aid to raise awareness and mixing music with with these you know with these other with these uh businesses and and, and foundations that are, that are going out and actually trying to have positive impact on the planet mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so we've, we've got them penciled in for, for saturday night we're out fundraising for it at the moment um i don't think we'll have a problem finding money once we find the right brand to to have the to put the initial seed money in yeah um then um yeah i i think it will fly um i actually went to an event um on friday uh a, a um a hydroponic event right. and and i was looking at all of the nutrients right and i was just thinking nutrient companies mm, yeah. meals right um I've got, my brain's gone dead now but you know all of these other big nutrient companies that that, that you know that actually are the nutrients that go into making vegetables yeah. more healthy, right? Making flowers more healthy, and so so that so then if you're if Earth Aid is then you know supporting projects down in Africa and and and, and other other developing countries, they're going to need nutrients in because yeah. if you look at what they're trying to do with the uh, with with these uh, sustainable development goal villages and creating these sort of new villages that have this hydroponic system built around them which allows for sort of a full circular flow uh, and closed loop system so no no outside pollution and stuff like that nutrients are going to need to go into the water I, th I think i think the hydroponics and nutrients industry uh is going to play a key role in in earth aid i'm putting it out there one of the other things i was going to talk about there sam was a uh, refuel could you cover a bit about what, what you guys actually do there yeah yeah sure um so so refuel it's, it's now called fuel for you so it started off as refuel um and uh but you know but it, and, and and we were discussing this a little bit before with with, with with owning ip and this is so key when you're when you're creating a brand is that is making sure that you own the ip there's no one out there that has got you know a similar name that you know because as soon as you go to trademark this it will it, everything will get flagged and this is what we had with refuel um but we, you know, we're very happy where we ended up with 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 uh, with fuel for you, um, which we see as eventually will become fuel for. Um, and uh, it, it, it's been a great journey with them. Uh, I met um, uh, I met uh, Pete Madigan, the founder. Um, where was it? It was probably just before 2019. This is the weird thing because of because of COVID. Yeah, there's a void. Ev everything is just like it's it's it's, it's quite odd. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I think it was 2019. We met at a, a cannabis dinner that was put in, but was put on by Marwan Elgamal from uh, from the Higher Club. Um, you should have you, have you heard of Marwan before? Have no, you, I haven't. Have you seen anything that he does? No, you should I'm, I'm, I'm check him out. He'd be he'd be a cool person to to uh, to interview actually. Um, and we met at this we met at this cannabis dinner and uh, and we got along immediately. And when we walked to Liverpool Street afterwards, uh, and uh, and then you know we had, we had a we had a, another joint together. And by that point. The THC popcorn was kicking in <laughs> and uh you know so then we were there for like an hour and a half just basically just shouting at each other about all of the exciting things that we can do yeah we can do this we can do that yeah 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 uh and um and yeah and 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 he introduced me to the team that he had which is partly over in California as well um that's where the formulators are and they had this great brand and he showed me a video that he'd done and it had this this track in the background and it was all California sunshine and 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 I just watch the video and you just you just you just feel good straight away you don't even have to bloody try anything you're just like <laughs> oh this is amazing um and uh and yeah so just 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 uh just started chipping in with with all of the bits that they were doing and 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 then because of the ip experience that i'd had with 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 ej um and formula e um i knew that you needed to own the ip so i was constantly asking have you trademarked it have you trademarked it um and they were like well no can we look at it so we started looking at it and I stitched myself up because I <laughs> I asked the company that I work with if they could do if do me a favor and just check this trademark, which they did. Um, and then we we were following it up, and I didn't realize. But afterwards, they were charging me every time that they were doing a uh-huh. check on it. So all of a sudden, I got this bill in for like I don't know eight hundred quid. I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> uh, so yeah, she learned the hard way. Always ask if you're getting charged money. Um, and um, yeah, and anyway, look, refuel was very similar to, to to other stuff that was already there on the market. Um, so we needed to look at something else. So if yeah, fuel fuel for you was born. Uh, fuel fuel news have gone through all of the all all, all of the, the checking and what have you. Um, and uh, it's it's difficult. It's difficult bringing a brand to market, um, especially in the in, in the cannabis industry, even even in a in a CBD industry um, with the novel food side of stuff in in the UK. Um, there was a deadline with novel food. Now that certain brands have to wait a certain amount of months before they can, you know, apply again, um, which is nonsense, right? Because yeah. the novel food thing, if you're doing a full, full, full extract, a full spectrum, um, extract, um, and, and you're doing it cold press that has been done for, 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 for thousands of years. So you're taking yeah. exactly, you know, you're squashing it down, you're taking that extract and, and then that extract is, is, is going out. And, um, yeah, and a novel food was created for any any um, any uh, process post nineteen ninety seven. Um, you know, it was a novel food pre nineteen ninety seven wasn't a novel food. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole argument at the moment that really cannabis isn't a novel food, but it's a it's you know it's something that exists out there now, and that's the that's the regulations. But now we challenge the regulations and say, well, no, all right, you've said that, but look at novel foods in a positive way and look at the fact that the UK is out of Brexit and now we control everything here in the, in the UK. Look how quickly we can make our own decisions. Um, I think there's, you know, there are positives to come out from it, but as a brand trying to go to market, it's it's difficult. So we've been having various conversations for different different formulations. Um, uh, I got told yesterday that apparently if you mix, even if you need a bog standard isolate, um, I don't quote me on this. This was someone over in the States that told me this, but if you mix a bog standard CBD isolate, um, or THC isolate with a with a um, with a selection of terpenes, you get the you get a full spectrum effect just because of the terpenes. Now, right. I'm starting to just find out about the power of terpenes. I mean, terpenes could potentially, according to someone, according to Paul uh, von Hartmann over in over in the states. Paul, how are you? Mm-hmm. Um, according to Paul, he hasn't done the testing, but his theory is. Uh, that, that terpenes could potentially protect us from UVB radiation. Hasn't been proven. Um, we ain't got time to find out. So basically, and but, we, but what we do know is do know is that there, there's a report from Borel Forests uh, that was written up in The Guardian along the, the 2010, I think it was, that, that Paul pulls up, and that Borel Forests, the, the terpenes from the pine trees, uh, would create this protective layer and go up mm. into the atmosphere, create this protective layer. But the borrowed, borrowed tree, the borrowed uh, forests are all being chopped down. So you need terpenes to be replaced into the atmosphere, especially 
if uh, you're going to be removing a lot of the, the carbon because the carbon is actually, as well as it uh, not allowing the, the, the heat to escape, um, it's also uh, apparently, I'm not a scientist, um, but I just find this all of this stuff interesting. And I think if the research doesn't exist, then we should definitely be doing it. Yeah. Um, if we remove the carbon from the atmosphere, um, then that obviously will allow, that's protect, that's protecting us from UVB radiation. That will allow, allow more UVB radiation to come through, which essentially will cook us. So mm. apparently, if you put terpenes up into the atmosphere, that will then create a protective shield as well. It, is, it, is, is it true the science isn't there to, 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 to prove it? People had theories, right? How many people have had theories in the past yeah. <laughs> and then they've been proven right? Yeah. So, you know, let's, if, we're, if we're doing all of this hemp farming um, and, you know, we, we've got the opportunity to test the soil to see what the CBD, uh, to, to see what the CBD, see what the carbon um, sequestration rates are going into the soil, into the plant, let's do some tests to see what the, what the terpene profiles are uh, around, those, around those fields and what that, what that looks like, because it, it, could be, it could be very, very interesting. You mentioned earlier in the conversation there, Sam, about the, the land race element of people growing outside um, traditionally, and I think that will contribute in the same manner towards terpene um, in the atmosphere. Mm, yeah, well, it's, sorry, so growing, growing outdoors. So, yeah, yeah, instead of um, actually yeah. growing in, in greenhouses and stuff. Now, if, can, you, can you still grow in polytunnels so that you can still control the environment a little bit, but will those terpenes then still be released out into the, into the atmosphere? How, how can you do that, right? Because if we, if we want to grow a uh, high THC cannabis here in the UK to use for medicinal purposes, mm -hmm. we need to be growing indoors because we need to create an environment. We need to control that environment. Number one, we need to make sure that creating that controlled environment isn't it doesn't have a ridiculously high carbon footprint because that completely undermines the whole basis <laughs> undermines of it. the whole thing yeah but you know what technologies are there out there that you know that that you know can you you know what does it look like if you use some of your crop to create ethanol to power a generator that then creates a steam engine that then the steam then controls the 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 the, 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 the power for example i don't know um uh but you know we we need to create these controlled environments um does that terpene profile go out into the atmosphere who who knows but if you're looking at countries like in you know the emerald triangle for example where they can grow outdoors and i had i had the opportunity of going to the emerald triangle at the back end of 2019 yeah and man ah. oh man jealous <laughs> it's a very 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 cool place um they got some very cool people there. Uh, Tim Blake, uh, who founded the Emerald Cup um, mm. and has written a, a, gave me his book called The Cannabis Crusader, right? This, this guy has been at the forefront of it since the 70s, you know, running, you know, fighting off the feds, fighting off cartels, you know, that it, it, his book's amazing. It's like, and, and, and it, that's now been split up into uh, a series of books. And those series of books are now being put into a, um, uh, uh, like a, a Netflix uh, oh, nice. series. Um, and the way how he describes it is Narcos meets the X-Files. <laughs> and I'm just like, fucking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I met uh, the Emerald Cup guys at Product Earth in 2019. Um, and... Um, yeah, went and then went over to California in October and drove, drove up to the Emerald Emerald Triangle. No one in the UK knew where I was, right? And my mate <laughs> laugh at me now because if you watch Murder Mountain yeah. on, on Netflix, right, it paints such a bad picture of, <laughs> of, of the place. And you know, all right, it you know, it's it's it 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 it, it was a bit the Wild West, you know, and, and you know it, it it was that way. Um, but um but it's it's so fucking cool it's where all the hippies moved to in the early 1970s to go up into the mountains to practice regenerative farming and to grow weed yeah. um and you know that has then spawned some of the best weed in in the world which then you know comes come, and everybody rants and raves about cali weed right um uh but you know it's where it's where some of the best weed has, has been grown for for decades and uh so i met tim blake on this bloody on the on uh, on the uh, side of the um, side of the freeway or side of the, the road um, at just like this little supermarket, his nephew Chad, who I'd met at Product Earth, 
had basically who's what we've been speaking to he'd organized it all and we just met and we sat down and he had um oh god what's his name the guy that basically gets dressed up for them in like the whole cannabis suit oh he's gonna kill oh, farrakhan is that his name for oh, no no this they say this is the this is the californian version of him oh, right, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um he's uh, uh he's he, he's awesome so he was there as well and we were sitting on the side of this road just sharing a joint and uh, by them just saying what 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 are you doing here <laughs> and I, I basically just went off on this rant about talking about you know motorsport championships and you know that i work for a motorsport championship and that we can create this like motocross series that the bikes would be powered by hemp and built out of hemp and everything mm. these guys must have been just looking at me just going <laughs> who is this fucking english lunatic <laughs> that has turned up on our doorstep uh but then you know but, but got on really well with him tim took me up to like some of his grow places and and like saw like the you know the what this looks like on 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 scale and then I went and visited Swami and Nikki from Swami Select, and they're two of the original hippies that moved up there in the seventies. Um, and they've got a beautiful ranch with like the plants all in a certain shape in a circle and positions, you know, so it's spiritual and, you know, they're very spiritual and it was just a really nice, really nice experience, man. And, um, and uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, you see what it can, it can become if you can grow outdoors. Yeah. But I think where sort of growing outdoors will have the most impact is, is, is Africa. Uh, because, you know, farmers are going to be able to grow outdoors. They've got the land space. They can charge for carbon credits. They're going to be able to create products that can not only sell on the market, they can also produce to actually go into their communities. They can create hemp briquettes that, you know, that can they don't have to chop down trees anymore. They can build schools. They can clothe their kids, you know, all, all, all of this stuff um and uh you know but then you know if you want it to have a uh you know we've been fighting that for such a long time in 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 in, in and, and trying to have that positive impact in in developing worlds so you know if, if governments aren't going to act on that quick enough act on something that's even you know that's right on your doorstep now you yeah. know which you shouldn't be that you shouldn't be ignoring what's going on in these you know in these developing countries but if something is on your doorstep right now here is a solution to 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 act. Um, and hey, we can go and help all of these other countries at the at, at the same time. So that that for me is what what this what this industry can do, man. And it's yeah. really exciting. It is really. It's, I I really don't think there'll be an, another time in our lifetime where it's exciting as this. There's nothing else that's going to pop out the woodwork, you know. And this has been slowly emerging over decades, almost a century now. Um, but this is like. This is going to be one of those times where really at 20 or 30 years time, we'll be looking back going, talking about these moments. That's what, that's what this is. That's what this is, you know. It will definitely be written in the history books, I think, to say the least. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's exciting times, man. I mean, and the thing is, obviously, UK is it's making progress, obviously, albeit slowly. But how key do you think normalisation is? Do you think things like Product Earth are key for, for normalising cannabis in the UK? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, in Product Earth, I mean, even, you know, you look at, so the product serves on 20th and, and, and 22nd of, uh, of August, and it's probably the um, biggest cannabis expo there is in, 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 in the country, right? Um, because it encompasses everything. It's, you know, it, it's, 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 it's all love into all uh, areas, whether that be medicinal, hemp, recreational, um, uh, spiritual in a way, because, you know, we've got got some speakers on stage that, 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 that are going to be incredible that are very few spiritual people and feel that you know we have a communication with this with this plant with with, with mother nature and you know and and that the, the cannabis plant is one way for mother nature to be to be to be talking to us to say hey we've got to, we've got to do something because i gotta say if you do smoke this you know if you if you do consume cannabis it does give you a different perception on life which we yeah. all know yeah. Um, which is why we think that everybody should be, yeah. <laughs> everybody should have a chance to experience in it, yeah. uh, which is why a legal market is so important. Um, but you know, product turf is, 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 we've, this, I mean, incredible. I, I think what product turf is going to be important for is mixing science with, 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 with the now and yeah. seeing, you know, the scientific view and the scientists, uh, perspective on all of this um and 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 the professionals so it's got i mean i'm a bit biased to it because i'm helping with the seminars but <laughs> from helping with the sentiment seminars you know i've been looking after the cannabis ones and we got a cool one on the on the friday night which is basically the whole industry around a campfire um and that is we're in this together an industry fireside chat 
um, and we've got Simper Carter, um, uh, we've got uh, Sean Phillips uh, from CTA, we've got Hannah Deacon from Maple Tree and CIC, uh, we've got uh, Robert Jappy uh, from from uh, from Ints, um, and, and Chris Tasker um, from from Global Cannabinoid Solutions. You know, all I consider absolute, you know key people in, in in the cannabis industry but a great dynamic you know legal to recreational activist um uh, to scientist to, to trade association to to mum who was the mum who was the first mum to, to 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 get this legalized in this country for for her, for her son yeah. um so that should be I'm, I'm looking forward to that um and then we've got a um med can and plea medical cannabis patient perspective one on saturday afternoon we got Guy Coxall and and uh, and and um, and Phil Monk um, presenting their case. Uh, you know, cannabis, no evidence, no crime, um, which is a fantastic case. Which Outlaw is also, um, you know, pushing, um, which 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 is true. Yeah. Basically, they're right, they're right. But you know, but it's just amazing how governments can sit, literally put their fingers in their ears, and if they put their fingers in their ears and they don't allow it to get into the mainstream media. Yeah. Um, how how stuff can get sat on for a long time, but you know what they're doing is 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 is, is something very very cool. Um, you know, and- cool. When you when you actually name all this here, Sam, this is cool as fuck when you think about it. When you've got all of these lined up people, man, and it's mm. just it's such a diverse uh, uh, spectrum of uh, industry and activism and uh, me- medical elements, and obviously CBD elements, which is obviously relatively more mainstream. But the idea that all of this is going on, there's thousands of people attending, thousands of people are talking about it, and the government's like. No medical benefit. Hemp's not really that viable. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 exactly. Which is why I'm quite excited about about the call that we had with Michael Gove, you know, because he actually admitted, admitted to us that he knew the medicinal benefits of cannabis. Uh, we told him about the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the environmental benefits of hemp, which he was wowed by. Right. Um, you know, so I would say that the government of, are in a little bit of a predicament at the moment yeah Um, because we've got a major government official saying all of these things and so you know they should really be acting on this a lot quicker than 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 they should be because look at what's going on everybody is everyone is stressed everybody's anxious everybody's diseased um the the cut the, the, the 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 world is in is in trouble and needs a little bit of help and here we have a UK government has had this information for a year, clearly, because we, and I know that they've had it because we clearly, we clearly told them, yeah. um, and they've not acted on it. And that's poor government, really, poor governing. Yeah. Hopefully the response for uh, COP26 will have a much more positive impact then, because that's obviously 100% official. You know, they'll have to listen. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, but, it, but they're still, you know, I mean, it was still, it's still being presented on a plate to them. Literally, mm. silver, silver plate. Here you go. Here, yeah. here is everything. Here is the industry. Here are all of the people. Here are all of the right people to make the decisions. Um, here are the scientists. Here are the experts. Here's the blueprints to multiple businesses with costs against them that that that, that show you how to have an industry in this country. Um, here is everything. <laughs> Here is here is the whole the whole shebang, yeah. Um, and you're not acting on it, so therefore, you know, you there's obviously something clearly clearly wrong. Yeah, I think of it. I mean, just before we go here, Sam, I think of it as the long con that there that there's that's what makes me think what I said earlier about activism fuels. Although it's it's uh, implies their their passion and legitimacy, and we need to have this element in society. It feels like it's difficult because you're going against something that seems to be already predetermined to an extent. They're, they're looking at it as if like we'll wait and decide where we can maximize, and then we'll flick the switch. That's what it feels like from the outside. Probably that's probably exactly it. To be honest, they're probably it's a game of chess, and they're all positioning themselves. Um, and they're all set to make a lot of money out of it. Yeah. But you know, there's no time like there's 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 no time like the present. The time yeah. is now. It's it, it legalize it now. Make the mm. make the make the make the moves when you get back from your nice little summer holiday, wherever, wherever <laughs> you've gone to. Yeah. Make the moves to 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 allow this country to absolutely thrive in this market, which is which is which is, which will be the number one. And I push that to the top because. That is, you know, this country should, you know, we want to help other people without shadow of a doubt. But as a country, we 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 need help. So let's let's 
fix us first. Yeah. And but but we can do this. We can do this. We can help other countries at the same time. That's fine. But let's let's make the UK thrive. Mm. And 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 that is what the that's what the cannabis industry can do. It's already it's already predicted that you know that the the, the UK is going to be the leader in 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 the cannabis industry mm. by twenty. Every, everybody knows this. You know, great. You have fantastic countries like Holland and and yeah. But I, I think there's something about the UK. I would. I don't know if I'm going back now and I'm, I'm starting to feel like I shouldn't have said that because I don't want to feel biased. I like, I, I like, feeling too, I like getting on with everybody, but yeah. I, I think we've got a fantastic opportunity to, mm. to, to really take advantage of this. Um, it's going to create hundreds of thousands of jobs. Um, it's going to reboost the, 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 the UK farming community. Um, it's going to give the uh, farmers a new crop to play with that will essentially create farms that their children will be really interested in, which is another problem that we have at the moment. Mm. Um, you know, hemp has, uh, <laughs> how many uses does hemp have? 50,000 uses, I think, is, is, yeah. is, is hemp has. I hear anything from 25 to 50, it probably got even more. Mm. Uh, but if you look at any industry, you can see how, how the cannabis industry can actually come and, come and assist that industry. Number one, by making it more climate positive, mm -hmm. but number two, by, you know, maybe, de-stressing the workers putting health plans together for workers to so that they can go into meetings and not feel um tense and 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 feel that they want to you know that feel they can contribute i mean how often do the workers sit in the corner and not say anything you hear that story and, and they walk away and they say oh i really wanted to add add my two pen, but i couldn't couldn't imagine being able to help workers where you know you work out what their cannabinoid profile is for their body that allows them to relax that they can walk into that that room and say what they want to they want to say yeah. um i certainly hope so sam well uh, let's see we've pretty much covered everything uh, you want to add anything before we get going no man i'm good <laughs> excellent Brian, it's, been well, great, let's it's been great speaking to you mate thanks to sam for giving me his time and thanks to you for sticking around until the end of the video i sincerely hope you enjoyed the content i'll see you next time